Some of the things I was thinking about was how do we help students become really engaged in the topic. And by that I meant it's not just about turning up at a lecture and doing the assignment, but actually trying to make sense of it, apply it. What we ended up doing then, in terms of what the students had, was each tutorial group had a blog, and each week a number of students from each tutorial group had to make a blog entry which summarised the key learning from the lectures, tutorials and readings. And so for each week we ended up with about seven students doing a blog entry around that topic. And throughout the semester each student had to do three blog entries and then at the end of the semester they handed in those blog entries as one assessment. So what it meant was that the students were continually doing some work throughout the semester. But the main reason we did this was because it was a way that the students could get some feedback and that's what we really wanted to do. So that every week the tutors for each tutorial group gave some feedback to the students, some formative feedback. But the students were also required to make comments on, I think it was five, at least five over the semester. So we wanted them to give each other feedback as well. So that was the task. And in terms of support, each tutorial group ended up with an e-learning mentor. And they were essentially there as a resource for that person. And all I asked the e-learning mentors to do was to make initial contact. And so we gave them all access to the unit on Blackboard and to the student blogs, because that's where the blogs were. And so the students introduced themselves and then checked in probably only two other times throughout the semester just to say I'm here and if there's any questions about using any form of technology to support your learning then get in touch. I kept a unit blog as well as unit coordinator um, and used that as the main contact that I had in terms of sharing information with them but it was also a chance for me to model what some of the blog entries might look like and so I put up a few samples and answer questions but I was also able to link in particularly through the sample blog entries how you could understand what was going on in the real world, as it were, in relation to some of the unit content. So I was driving into work one morning and heard something on the radio, um, and I made a blog entry about that, saying this is interesting and links to some of the theory we've just been talking about. So I tried to make it applicable, and that's what we encourage the students to do as well, is to not just summarise the material, but make links with um, their day-to-day -day life. I think keeping a unit coordinator blog, and I've used it for other units now, it's just much easier because I say send me questions and I'll answer them on the blog. So I, again time-wise I don't have to reply to all these numerous emails, I just put up blog entry about questions about assignment one and all the things are there. But I think it's also an easy way to maintain that connection so that it's not just me in the lecture and me in tutorials but there's some presence of me and the unit and the content. In terms of learning outcomes, just based on the feedback the students gave us through the evaluate process, they saw some benefits to it and some of them were things like some did appreciate the fact that it helped them do this one of the assignments at least in a step-by-step -step process. So rather than waiting till the end, they recognised the benefit and doing a bit now, doing a bit later and a bit later on. It was a chance for them to see the, the work of other students, which they don't often get to do. The other thing, and this was a bit mixed, they liked the feedback, um, but I think they wanted more feedback around those things. But, that, but one of the issues for us was the number of blog entries every week and the number of tutorial groups meant it was actually quite a demand on staff time. Some students, they said it was fun and it was a bit different, which I think is one way, not that we're here just to make it fun, but it does mean it's a bit different and maybe might be more engaging but also that they had never used blogs before, but actually did see it as a way of helping to develop their understanding, and I guess of the material, and I guess that was a really important thing. It was one of the things we hoped for. I think there's a few things that I would do differently, is to invite other people from around the world to come and look at the student blogs and make a comment, because I think that makes that link and makes it a more real learning experience makes them have to think a bit more about what they write and how they write it and all those sorts of things. But also I think it is a way to bring students into the occupational therapy culture because it makes them feel part of a much bigger occupational therapy group rather than just being a student at Curtin. The other thing I'd probably do a bit differently is the e-learning mentors and might think about how to structure that a bit better in terms of maybe identifying some key tasks or t key issues based on what we learnt from, from this run-through 
and maybe get the e-learning mentors at particular times to go in and address a particular issue with the students. And I think the other thing is just the practicalities of having a think about how to manage giving enough feedback for so many blog entries every single week, because we did get behind some weeks. It was probably much easier than I thought. Once all the practicalities, because setting up nine blogs and assigning all the students and making them private, that, that was that took time, but didn't take that much time. But once that was done, it was relatively straightforward. And I think that one of the things it does, which I think is useful for all people who are working in education, is it does give a bit more of an insight into what the students are taking from the material. So rather than just sitting there and having tutorial experience where you might get a bit of contact from some of the students, but not all of them, this is a way that at least you get to see each week a small number of students having to write about and apply their learning. So you get a bit more of an insight into where are the students at with their learning and the material. So you can identify weaknesses and things you might need to do more about. 